he's coming out. Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future. And we will have a general election on the 4th of July. Six weeks of campaigning now done. A day of voting nearly over. The likely winner of the general election just an hour from being revealed. So the question is, will it be Rishi Sunak, Sakir Starmer, or neither of them? Who will be standing victorious in Downing Street tomorrow? They don't yet know. We don't yet know. But we'll find out tonight on Election Night Live. Good evening and welcome to Election Night Live. There's less than an hour to run until the polls close, an hour until we release the exit poll, an hour until we find out who's likely to govern Britain for the next five years. The parties are battling to see which leader will step through the door of number 10. But we've beaten them to it. Throughout the night, we'll be here in the heart of a digital Downing Street. We'll bring you all the results of the general election as they happen. And we'll discover who'll be walking into the real number 10 as Prime Minister tomorrow. For the next hour, there's only one number that matters, the countdown to when we can release the broadcaster's exit poll. Our Sky News team, including our data editor Ed Conway, are part of that. And neither you nor I will know what they know right now until the magic moment at 10 o'clock. It'll be our first big indication of the winner of this election and the scale of any victory. With me on this journey will be a fantastic <laughs> team of political heavyweights. Look who's here, my trusty wing woman. What would I do without her? Our political editor, Beth Rigby, right beside me throughout. Uh, no bathroom break, sorry. Uh, <laughs> just the other side, Trevor Phillips, a man who's seen his own fair share of election nights, imparting lots of sage knowledge later on. And for political heft, you don't get much better than the mayor of Greater Manchester and my very good friend, Labour's Andy Burnham, and the former leader of the Scottish Conservatives and best very good friend, Baroness <laughs> Davidson. Welcome to you all. Are we all set? Yeah. Yeah. Excited? Yeah. Totally. Yes. Excited. Yeah. Any nerves? A few. I mean, uh, I'm always just, nervous. Just election thrill. Night. Just, ex <laughs> just it's thrilling, isn't it's it? It's so thrilling. Honestly, I'm so excited. I could <laughs> scream. <laughs> We're all following all the parties and players tonight, right across Scotland, Wales, and indeed Northern Ireland. And all of those results will be here at the bottom of your screen. There you go. Your one stop shop for information about who has won what and when. So, not long now until the counting begins and the results start coming in. Since 7 o'clock this morning, millions of people up and down the country have been casting their vote and still are. Earlier, the leader of the Lib Dems, that's Sir Ed Davey, voted alongside his wife in Kingston and Surbiton in south-west London. The Green Party co-leader, Carla Denyer, cast her vote in Bristol. Morning. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak voted alongside his wife in Richmond in North Yorkshire. And the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, also accompanied by his wife, was seen bright and early at a polling station in North London. Well, my colleagues Anna Botting and Mark Austin will be with the Conservative and Labour leaders tonight as they hear their own results and also the results of the election. To Anna in North Yorkshire in just a moment, but first to Mark, who's standing by in North London for us. Hi, Mark. What's the atmosphere like where you are? Yes, good evening, Kay. Uh, as you know, we can't get into the politics uh, of all this while the polls are still open, because them's the rules. But there's a real buzz uh, here, and I should... It's five to ten, and with millions of you having cast your votes, the polls are about to close. The arguments of the campaign are over. The counting is about to start. So, let election night begin.
A very good evening to you. Welcome to our election night studio, your destination for unrivaled coverage over the next 10 hours as we discover whom you've chosen to walk through that famous door in Downing Street. Last time round, Boris Johnson was Prime Minister. Jeremy Corbyn led the Labour Party. We were still in the European Union and no one had heard of coronavirus. Today, of course, the political landscape is very different and the leaders of all the main parties have changed. Sir Keir Starmer cast his vote this morning. Only four Labour leaders have ever been elected Prime Minister. Has he done enough to seal the deal with the British people? And can he lead Labour to its first victory in nearly 20 years? Rishi Sunak is the fifth Tory Prime Minister in quick succession. He surprised the country with a snap election and has been fighting hard to hang on to power after the Tories' 14 years in charge. But can he cross Jeremy Vine's winning line outside number 10? Every paving stone, a parliamentary seat. You remember 2019 when Boris Johnson won all these seats and paved a path to the door of number 10. This time, can Labour turn the blue seats red and send Keir Starmer through that historic black door or will the Conservatives hold them off? This is the engine room of our election coverage where we're keeping an eye on all the election centres right across the UK with an army of reporters. Fiona Bruce and Victoria Derbyshire are with the Labour and Tory leaders. And the race to deliver the first result is always fiercely contested. So we have our earliest risers on the hunt for the early declarers. Hello, I'm in Blythe, where a recount in 2019 stopped them winning. But this time, this team is even more determined than ever. Do we think we can beat Sunderland this time? Yes! Well, let's just see, shall we? Sunderland has won this race many, many times, and they're not giving up without a fight. Here in London's broadcasting house, our teams are poised ready to gather and then verify every single result as they begin to come in. And of course, at the heart of it is Professor Sir John Curtis, who's been hard at work already all day with the exit poll team. And in just a few moments, we can legally reveal the results of all of those calculations. That exit poll will indicate who will be heading here to the Commons and Rita Chakrabarti will be checking all the numbers. We're feeding all that data into the giant screen now and in a few moments' time I'll be able to tell you which seats are most likely to be changing hands. If neither Keir Starmer nor Rishi Sunak win the magic 326 seats, could one of the smaller parties back them up? Ed Davies' Liberal Democrats would love to become the third biggest party once again. Nigel Farage is back in frontline politics with Reform UK and Kirsty Wark is watching the battle in Scotland. I'm here in Glasgow where we're expecting a night of high drama with politicians using the results in Scotland to argue for or against independence. I'll be joined by the country's senior politicians, advisers and commentators to react to the big stories right through the night. Ready for an avalanche of information and reaction, our political editor Chris Mason is with us here in the studio. So, we're seconds away from 10 o'clock and the exit poll, a first indication of how the night might unfold. More than 20,000 people took part on behalf of the BBC, ITV News and Sky in this first July election since 1945. 326 seats I needed to win. So, here we go. And as Big Ben strikes 10, the exit poll is predicting a Labour landslide. Sir Keir Starmer will become Prime Minister with a majority of around 170 seats. The exit poll predicts that Labour will have captured 410 seats, adding 209. It suggests the Conservatives will have lost 241 MPs, landing on 131. On to the end. Prime Minister took us all by surprise as he launched his re-election bid in the pouring rain. And even his supporters might acknowledge it pretty much went downhill from there. The polls were disastrous, then catastrophic, then into potential wipeout territory. But were they right? Or could we be in for another shock? We are not far now from the moment of truth for the PM, for the pollsters, indeed for all of us. 
The seconds are ticking down to the first strike of Big Ben at 10 o'clock, when the broadcaster's joint exit poll will give us the clearest indication of the new political landscape. Have we voted for change? And if so, have we done so decisively? On every election night, history is made. The party leaders voting earlier will, of course, have been all too well aware of the predictions of record-breaking shifts. So much on the line for each of them tonight. There are always two key questions. What is happening and what does it mean? We have what we believe is the best possible team to help you chart a course through what could be a turbulent night. Buckle up. The political map is about to be reshaped and we've got our most powerful set of tools to get into the data from the exit poll and the early results to separate the signal from the noise so you can make sense of it all. And we've got our biggest and best ever panel of experts. Former Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon joins George Osborne and Ed Balls to analyse and interpret the story of the night. Robert Peston is here to give us his political insight and to mine his contacts. This election has felt from the off like a huge moment in our history, partly because the last 14 years have seen so many shocks and the world remains so uncertain and dangerous. Will the UK choose a new path? And could we about to feel an earthquake that shakes our entire system? And we have two of the most highly respected election experts in the country, Professors Colin Rallings and Jane Green, to break down the what and the why of the results. We'll have correspondence in every nation, in every region, with the party leaders and those constituencies racing to be the first to declare. I'm in Blythe, where they're hoping to beat their local rivals across the North East by announcing the first MP of the new Parliament. I'll be bringing you regular updates here in the ITV newsroom where our results team will be taking calls from our journalists across the country as they aim to bring you the results before anyone else. Here with me throughout the night will be Paul. Yes, Nina, I'll be keeping a close eye on stories emerging from counts across the nation as we learn how your vote will shape Parliament. So, we are with you for the next eight hours through every twist and turn of what is sure to be an interesting and might be an astonishing night. Welcome to election 2024. The result, live. Only a few moments to go now until the polls close and we can reveal the results of that joint broadcaster's exit poll to guide us through the impact of that projection for the new parliament. We have an unrivaled panel of political minds who've been at the heart of power themselves when previous exit polls signalled the reshaping of governments, alliances and political careers. Let's get a sense from them of what they'll be looking out for as the night unfolds. Nicola, maybe I can start with you. I mean, like, you've been a leader. You've <laughs> sat there waiting. What are you thinking at this moment? As a party leader, you're feeling utterly sick at this moment. All of your worst fears are, are crowding into your mind. The clock is ticking. The final votes are being cast. And after all the speeches, all the promises, all the arguing... It's time to see what Britain decides. Good evening and welcome to what is certain to be a dramatic and indeed historic night. I'm Krishna Guru Murthy. And I'm Emily Maitlis. We've come together for this election night. Thank you so much for joining us too. Well, as you can see, we're just a few minutes away from the polls closing at 10 o'clock. That's when we'll get a major indication of how tonight is going to pan out with our exit poll. Basically, a huge survey of how people voted today and it should give us a good idea of what the actual results will be. A lot of pledges from the politicians over the last six weeks. Tonight, our manifesto is one you can absolutely rely on. We promise you drama. We promise you all the results that matter. And we promise you the best analysis around. That's why we've also teamed up with Rory Stewart and Alistair Campbell from The Rest Is Politics podcast. We're delighted to say they're with us all night to share their insight and opinions. 
Now, over the next 11, yes, 11 hours, and with no commercial breaks, our aim is to help make sense of what tonight means for Britain and for all of us. Having said that, the one thing we're absolutely not allowed to talk about before voting ends is what might actually happen tonight. If this was the Euros, kickoff is nearly here. This is the pre-match build-up. But the rules say we can't talk about the game. So right now, our team needs to show unparalleled levels of restraint. Alongside us, Channel 4 News political editor Gary Gibbon, and we're joined exclusively by an unprecedented lineup of politicians, starting off with Harriet Harman, former deputy leader of the Labour Party, who held almost every post as an MP for more than 40 years. Kwasi Kwarteng, who was Liz Truss's chancellor for fewer than 40 days. And Nadine Dorries, the former Conservative Culture Secretary and a close ally of Boris Johnson. All three have stood down as MPs, but they're stepping up for us tonight. And for reaction to that exit poll, we also have Sir Vince Cable, the former Liberal Democrat leader, and Widdicombe, who's backing reform. Murray Black, the former deputy leader of the SNP in Westminster, and Azim Zahawi, who's held senior posts under four Conservative Prime Ministers. So I count eight former MPs and three former Strictly contestants here tonight. Will Anne and Vince be dancing with delight? Worth staying up all night just in case. And who better to help us make sense of all the numbers we're going to be bombarded with later than a genuine professor of maths? Hannah Fry is with us. I certainly am. Thank you. Yes, I am your numbers nerd tonight. And from this corner, we're going to be crunching all of that data from 650 constituencies to give you the swings, the majorities, the best stories from the stats. But of course, there is only one number that really counts in the end, and that is number 10. Now, you'll hear from lots of politicians tonight, obviously, but we're also the only place where you'll hear from real, actual people too. They're joining us from all over the country. We'll find out who they voted for today and why over the course of the night. Cathy Newman will join us regularly too. She's escaped the studio. She's in Westminster tonight. Yes, I'll be bringing you live reaction to that exit poll when it comes out in just a few minutes. And I'll be speaking to all the key players as the drama unfolds in the coming hours. Now, of course, thousands of people are standing by to count all the votes in town halls, schools and sports centres. We should get the first results around 11.30. It's always a race to try to be the first one to declare, and it's almost always in the northeast. The fastest ever first result came at just 10.43 in Sunderland. We have correspondents across the land stationed at the counts, which matter the most tonight. Before the exit poll drops, let's just check in on our reporters who are with the leaders of the Tories, Labour, Lib Dems and Reform. I'm in the Prime Minister's constituency of Richmond and North Allerton in North Yorkshire. I'll be following the fortunes of Rishi Sunak and the Conservative Party through the night. I'm at Holborn and St Pancras, the constituency of Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer. We're expecting a result here at around 2.30 this morning. I'm at the Liberal Democrats leader, Ed Davies Count, in south-west London, the Kingston and Surbiton seat. We're expecting the results here around 3.15am, but I'll also be tracking the Lib Dems' progress across the country. And I'm in Clacton, where Reform UK leader Nigel Farage is hoping to get elected. I'll be following Reform's progress through the evening. So, how many of us will actually vote today? Over to Hannah at the big screen. Yeah, so one of the most important stats that I'm going to be looking at tonight is uh, turnout. How many of us... It's 9.55, live across the United Kingdom. This is GB News, Britain's election channel. Well, in just a few minutes, the polls will close and you will have decided who gets the keys to number 10. I'm Stephen Dixon. And I'm Camilla Tomini. The excitement of election night starts right now. Live across the United Kingdom, this is GB News Vote 2024. The people decide. Tonight, history will be made, and by the morning, we may have a new Prime Minister. Well, over the coming hours, we'll bring you all the results as they happen, 
and we're going to have some fun along the way. Good evening, welcome to Essex for the GB News General Election Watch Party. I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Michelle Dubrin. We're going to have live reaction to each and every result from our wonderful audience of GB News viewers right here from Essex. Throughout the night, we'll be joined by some of the biggest names in British politics. From 10, Sir Brandon Lewis, James Heapy, Jeff Hoon, Gloria De Piero, and Callum Robertson. Plus, former Shadow Minister Luciana Berger, the former chairman of the Conservative 1922 Committee, Sir Graham Brady, and former Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng will be adding to a stellar cast right here in the studio. Here in the Data Hub, as each result comes in, we'll be analysing and dissecting every moment. As the results build up, we'll be making our, and refining our GB News prediction on who could be forming the next government, what the scale of that majority could be, and who becomes our next Prime Minister. We'll have GB News coverage across the UK, every nation and every key location. In around one hour's time, we'll get the first result. It could begin to give us an idea of where the vote is going. I'll be bringing you my analysis of every key moment. We'll be live at all the key counts throughout the night, including with each of the party leaders. Will they all win their seat? Do not miss a moment for the next 12 hours, uninterrupted, right across the UK, and of course, right here in our election night party. Yes, that's right. Get ready, because the most exciting night in general election history starts now! <laughs> Six weeks ago, on May the 22nd, a soaking wet Rishi Sunak announced to the United Kingdom a surprise early election. Well, this is the scene right now as the sun sets on Downing Street. But, of course, at dawn, we'll find out who will really hold the keys to number 10. Campaigning followed, dominated by blunders, scandals and debates. The population of the UK has been voting and we are seconds away from polling stations closing and the exit poll being revealed. Well, we are delighted tonight to be joined by pollster Matt Goodwin, former Conservative Secretary of State Sir Brandon Lewis, former Labour Shadow Minister Gloria De Piero and former Labour Defence Secretary Jeff Hoon. Good to see you all. Matt, let's start with you. Tell us why is this exit poll so important? Because... In a way, it's the most accurate poll, really, of the whole election campaign. Well, that's right, Camilla. It's got a great track record of actually telling us how the rest of the night is going to go. So for viewers who are not familiar with an exit poll, what's happened today is they've had people outside of uh, a number of polling stations across the country interviewing about between 10, 20,000 people, getting a really good measure of how they voted, what their concerns are. They'll then use that data to model what's happening across the country, uh, and we will get those headline numbers in a moment. And historically, they've always proved to be pretty accurate. Not in 1992. It was wrong then. It predicted a hung parliament and actually John Major surpassed expectations. But generally, they're pretty close. Absolutely. So just take the headline numbers with a pinch of salt. As we go through the night, we'll begin to see some variation. The question is how much variation. And in, in general, do we think that there has been too much polling over the course of this election? <laughs> There's just been a bit of criticism, hasn't there, of the MRP polling, a lot of detail, some suggestions perhaps too much. Well, there's a lot of polling, definitely, but also polling is getting more sophisticated. And in defence of my fellow pollsters, it's got a pretty good track uh, record. Matt, just to uh, interrupt, it is 10 o'clock right now, and that means the exit poll is going to be revealed. More importantly, of course, it means the polls have closed. So no one can have their say. It is done. However, it all works out tonight and tomorrow morning. Well, the last vote has been cast. It's now that the counting begins, of course. Um, Gloria, in all of this, because it's been such a strong lead in the, in the polling... Dunak, Nistama and Downing Street. Mar Ras i Rhif Deg, Bron ar Ben. Yn hen y chydifyn i da, mi fydd y canolfan ar bleisio yn cae, a'r cyfri yn dechra ar draws y dyn a synedig. Croeso i'r raglen etholiad 2024.
Nos oedd a chroeso ato ni yma yn sgwar canolog yng Nghaerdydd. Mae pawb yn hyn yn barod am noson hir, hwyr a physur. Ac yn cadw cwmni mi wrth y ddesg drwy'r nos sy'n gohebydd gwleidyddol ni elliw ar athro Richard Wynne Jones. Bydd na lwyth o westeion yn ymuno dros yr oriau nesam ydyn ni o hebwyr a chamerau ym hob un o'r canolfanau cyfri yng Nghymru be gewch i'r canlyniadau wrth ddydyn nhw gael eu cyhoeddi. Felly, am Dani Rhodri, wela i ddim bore. Siwr i ti. Rhwn dy gornel fydda i yn trafod rhai o byncie mawr ar ymgyrch yma o fewn fido i'r argyfwng coste byw. Hefyd, pethau fel addysg a iechyd meysydd sydd wedi datganoli i Gymru. Felly, siwr mae'r canlyniad heno yn mynd i effeithio ar yn bywydau pob dydd ni. A dyma'r stafell byw. Dyma lle fydda i. Ond y tu hwn, tu Gymru hefyd, mae'n gohebydd syneddol ni Catrin yn Downing Street. A dyma'r wobr i fwy bynnag fydd yn ennill heno a'i lliwiau coch llafur neu las ceidwadol fydd yn llenwi rhyd deg. A beth wedyn am y pleidiau llai? A'i ras dau geffyl oedd hon yn y pendraw neu a fydd y pleidiau eraill yn llwyddo i dorri drwy'r canol. A beth wedyn mae hynny'n golygu i bobl ledled y deyrnas unedig. Fe gawn i'r ymateb o'r deinasoedd i'r trefi i gefn gwlad Cymru. Yma yn oriel môn, mi fydda i'n cael cwmni perchnogion busnes, ffermwyr a phobl ifeg i glywed i lleisiau nhw. Pa wahaniaeth, mae nhw am ei weld wrth i'r canlyniadau lifo. Mae'r ynys yma wedi bod yn ganolog i ymgyrch sawl un o'r pleidiau, ond pwy tybed fydd yn mynd â hi. Mi fyddwn ni'n cadw golwg ar y sefyllfa fan hyn yn yr Alban hefyd. Mae'r SNP wedi cael sawl etholiad lwyddiannus iawn yn ddiweddar ond mae'r Blaid Lafur yn targedu nifer o'i seddi yn enwedig fan hyn o gwmpas ardal Glasgow. A bydd yr Alban yn allweddol felly wrth benderfynu pwy bydd yn ennill yr etholiad cyffredinol. Fe fydda i'n dadansoedd i'r ffigyrau ac yn asesu sefyllfa'r pleidiau yma yn ein stiwdio graffeg newydd. 326 o seddi. Dyna faint sydd angen ar unrhyw blaid i gael mwy afrif fe ddawr darlun yn gliriach dros yr oriau nesaf. Mi an sy'n ceir mi ddawr darlun yn gliriach ac mi gawn i awgrym o sut mae'r gwynt yn chwythu am ddeg o'r gloch ar i ben. Pan fydd y blycha pleidleisio'n cae ac mi fyddwn ni'n datgelu canlyniad ein harolog ni. O mae'r cloc ar wylod y sgrin yn tician tan y foment fawr yna felly dewch chi'n ei gael gair sydyn efo Richard ag elliw. Ha, yn ymyrd tai siachad, ha, slwag yn y riwch genig tre edd y fwtig. A rialtas agus bydd yw fyddai ŵr ac yn ffalche chyn yn teig. Hyn mor o am y sêl politics mae ha, fiach eich sinio ar eich y siôr y fyddys eich siôr, ac eich biach eich chyg eich gianw e de ha siôr e cioloch eich. Ha, sinio eich siôr an y lunyn, ys yna fi bech eich chyg eich na gwrt eich fi ffanair, a sydd eich tywch yn masa dda fychyl gan y labyr eich. Ac eich bi misio tors sŵl eich na hadd yfyn, fiach coha sŵus, coha siôr, ac eich fwyau eich mapa politicach na dwgyn. Ond y siôr yna fi eich chi'n cwmod trwy dyn y priodd eich ysyn y hyg ilanig ers yn y rialtus yw. Ha, drama gilliawr i ddyfithol y siôr i ddigel bach gyda'r hanyl bwrdd na fod, ulyg ac yn hast. Ni eisiau'n bygan cnwys o chi gyda i ddna hachyr trwy'n lai'n llyfoedd, neu gys gyda'r bygan ffai a dyrach i ddna gwrt i'ch tachyr i ymarach. Fi mysg o chi'ch dy gynnu y tol ar amser an ynglos chi, sy'n cwnnw eisiau'n mynd y pwyn gyn ys cwtrym i chi gaisyn. Agus cymyn mysio sŵl yn ha sís y cra i'r nymen yn sosialtus mae sian eich fiach gyda gwrs y ffysiwch yn, fe fi clachgeg y hashtag yn tywch. 
Vershing Sul, Maraha Kush and the Kuat Ekeni, the Sir Maha, have realtors Ur, Labroch Goviakin, Ounce Rioch Geniche, Le Morhuch Vor, Agis Rishi Sunak, a Fakala Griak, Marchanart, Nantorian, as J. A. Hefee, the Gulich and a Farty, Huch Vot Nantorian, Gumor, at Fjokna Rioch Geniche, Le Grand Vinish Jadan, Realtors, Agis Art Horian, a Kalna Sitikin Ake, Nameskshin, Grand Shaps, Agis Penny Mordant. The Canard Party Reform, Nigel Farage, on the Clacton, and he said, Edison, Opadine, Marval Falmach, Shark Tushin, Ronisho, Bonnie Corred, Un Harichet, Mille Vote, as a ski the Taishin, Le Morhuch, the Horred, Och Mille, is Kehit here, Degus Gu, Inisha Egison, Ans in a common then, a Kedder Vaginish Ega Reform. In Shaw, Amon Alabashi, the Garoch and Kevangan SNP, had the Huch Vort then a Sitik and Akison, a Howl, the Dolciasco, Naik, Shin Kalte, Shichet, Egis, a Hook. Han Helen and Inier, Evergold Jarak, son of Hiat, Turis, on the Havor Fichet Billione, she Torkel Crichton, Hanik and Bar, Gane Labrich, and Shin. Egis Eve Geltok, Wonich Jamie Stone, Ski the Galif, Katif is to Sher Rosh, Acha Achontig Egi, it's on Ski der Nish, in the Lanskiach, Egis to Sher Rosh, Hachatchen go Matinimaroch in Ishe, Egis Shinmaraha, Hulakal, a Kuat, Kahimulan, Ekinidese. Hallo, Fesker Magave. Fasche Vlach Rialchen Studio Glenzochaking, a GBBC at Brüchen Avin Chloe. Ha, Shinya Kulrev at Santa Udhije, Bio at BBC Alape, Egis Shintole Yachin, Riarsuch, Politikoch, Evinach, Klanya Shin Vor Skipian Nerch, Get Fjeknaduche, Vishinya Mui Asne Koyersnochen, Egis a Klanchen Vaivsh Kuchok at Torik and Bolt. Connection in Yalavs and Narshin Gorka, who's on the book and Vinagin and Shit, Marholishin, Ha Realtus, I guess, Pliava the Urakin, Sir Kier Starmer, a fang the Yochrian, Gu Adu, a Jech, with Shing Sul at Marahachel Show, Catchable Sugar Fakal, I guess, De Hasho, a Kielochic as a Lime Richach, I guess, a son Shin, a Yan across the UK on DAB Plus. On YouTube, on your mobile, and on your side, this is Talk. Well, good evening to you. It is just one minute before the polls close and we get that exit poll and we find out, well, just what the British electorate have decided. Stay with us here at Talk for all of the news. Joining me in the studio for their instant reaction to the exit poll is Lord Hayward. Robert Hayward is a Tory peer and, of course, pollster. Different hats on, depending on what we're talking about. <laughs> Conservative commentator Benedict Spence and also former Labour Party official Richard Power Said getting their views on where we are. So in literally 30 seconds or so, we will find out what is going to happen when the last votes have been cast. Millions of votes, of course, cast in postal ballots before today. But we'll get to find out only in a matter of seconds what that decision will be. Will we see Rishi Sunak leaving Downing Street? Will we see a new Prime Minister in Downing Street? Well, the information is going to be with us any moment now. Stay tuned for the exit poll that is imminent in a matter of seconds. And we'll bring it to you here at Talk. Well, what is that exit poll going to say? What is the result? Well, it is a Labour landslide. There's certainly no doubt about that. The exit poll has predicted 410 seats for Labour. That is this is the night we finally learn who our next Prime Minister will be, who will represent the UK on the world stage. And we learn who will speak for you where you live and who will have power and influence in Westminster. If it is Keir Starmer, it will be the end of years in the wilderness for the Labour Party, the first time Labour has taken power since 1997. If it's Rishi Sunak, it would be an unprecedented fifth consecutive election victory for the Conservatives and would represent an extraordinary political comeback. Election night is the night when history is written, sometimes they herald in a new era. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. A new dawn has broken, has it not? 
Sometimes the result is a bolt from the blue. I'm absolutely delighted with the outcome of the general election. Theresa May has played a high-risk political game and she may have lost her gamble. And sometimes what we remember is something completely different. Michael Portillo has lost the seat. Labour celebrates at the Festival Hall. If this exit poll is right, I will publicly eat my hat on your programme. Five years ago, election night was a night to remember. If you're a Conservative, Boris Johnson secured an 80-seat majority, winning seats in places that his party had never previously reached. It was a night to forget for Labour, producing the worst result since 1935. This time we've had an election in which so many claim to know the outcome before a single vote had been cast. And remember, people are still voting now. In less than 15 minutes' time, we'll have the first indication of how Britain has voted when we bring you the exit poll. The moment when the public and the party leaders get their first sense of the story is going to be written in the hours ahead. And from then on, we'll crisscross the country, taking you round the key seats, hearing from the winners and the losers, the big beasts, the future cabinet ministers, the MPs out on their ear, and starting the debate on what's happened and what happens next. Helping us to do that will be our BBC colleagues around the nation. Hi, I'm Martha Carney and I'm in North Yorkshire, not for the glorious scenery, but because this is where Rishi Sunak's standing. But I think the Prime Minister's going to have a lot more to digest than his own result. Quite a night ahead. I'm Justin Webb and I'll be following Sir Keir Starmer all night long. His journey to his count, his speech at that count, and then onwards to whatever comes next. This is James Nochte in Glasgow, where I'll be in the heat of the SNP Labour battle and looking across Scotland to all of its 57 seats that might tilt the Westminster balance and could send an important constitutional message across the UK too. Hello, I'm in Blythe, where a recount in 2019 stopped them winning. But this time, this team is even more determined than ever. Do we think we can beat Sunderland this time? Yeah! We'll hear from Naga Manchetti and many more of our reporters all over the country throughout the night as we follow the drama, not just the race to reach number 10, but the battles for power in Scotland and Wales, the regions of England too, and the impact of reform. The Liberal Democrats, the Greens, the SNP and Plaid Cymru. It's worth remembering that however often you hear this is a contest pitting Sunak against Starmer, it's not. Even if you add Farage and Davy, Swinney, Denya and Ramsey and up your earth, none of us could actually vote directly today for our choice of Prime Minister. That is because what's happening today, what is still happening now, is 650 elections across the country in towns and cities, villages and suburbs. We vote for a representative for our community to go to Parliament. The overall winner is simply the party that can amass a majority of those 650 constituencies. Half of 650 plus one gets you into power. 326 then is the magic number, the moment we know for certain which party forms the next government from tomorrow. It is that brutal. So, I hope you're ready. Whether you're with us on 5 Live or Radio 4 or watching us on the BBC iPlayer, we'll bring you the most comprehensive coverage of what will be an extraordinary night. Welcome to our election night studio here in New Broadcasting House. This is the BBC's nerve centre for the night. This is where we'll be getting all the information coming into us from every one of those 650 constituencies. It's where Professor Sir John Curtis and his team will be delving into the details of all the numbers. It's where we'll be joined by many of the big players who'll be explaining the results to us and to you. And Rachel, you can watch us. As well tonight, just go to the news website, BBC News website or BBC iPlayer and it's on the front page. Yeah, we brushed our hair and everything for the occasion, haven't we, Nick? And here we are in our studio, surrounded by notes, flashcards, multi-screen TVs, lots of screens in front of us at our desks. But the key information hubs of the night right beside us are our 
pair of big political brains. To my right, Chief Political Correspondent Henry Zeffman. To my left, Professor Philip Cowley, Professor of Politics at Queen Mary University, London. Phil, I know you've done many of these nights. Almost 20 years you've been in these studios working out what's going on, counting, analysing. How are you feeling about all of this? Uh, I'm feeling as excited now as I did with the first one back in 2005. Ah, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to election night as you've never heard it before. I'm Matt Chorley with you all night long, promising, as you would expect, election night without the boring bits. This 2024 general election was always going to make history. Either the Conservatives would win a fifth election in a row, unprecedented in modern British political history, or Labour would stage an extraordinary comeback after their worst result for more than 80 years. And you have a front row seat to history being made, right here, live on Times Radio, and live on the Times Radio YouTube channel. Now, you might think this thing is a foregone conclusion, but tonight it's all in the details. Over several hours, 650 individual stories will be woven together as the next chapter in our national story. And we will help to write the first draft. In the studio with me, our political editor, Kate McCann. In just a few moments, we'll get the exit poll, which will be the first clue as to how this extraordinary election will pan out. It'll be the first big moment of drama of the night, but definitely not the last. Watching and waiting with us, Callum MacDonald. I'm keeping across every result as they come in, making sure you don't miss a thing. If it's happening, you'll hear about it. Our in-house pollster, James Johnson, is crunching the numbers. From the moment we get the first result, I'll be analysing the emerging trends and swings to see where the votes are stacking up and how the map of British politics is being coloured in. Throughout the night, we will hear from all of the parties to congratulate or to commiserate, to ask what they plan to do in their new job or what happens now they don't have one at all. Plus, former Tory leader William Hague, Labour's Aisha Hazarika, Tory Lord Ed Vasey, some journalistic giants joining us live, Andrew Neil, Carolyn Quinn, Tim Shipman, Philip Webster and Ian Hislop. In just over an hour's time, we will bring the first of two special editions of How to Win an Election with new Labour mastermind Peter Manderson, Tory brain box Danny Finkelstein and Nick Clegg's former brain Polly McKenzie will be live in the Times newsroom as the presses and live blogs roll. And right across the country, we have Times Radio's finest exactly where you want them. I'm John Pienaar and I'm here at Labour's results party where they're hoping to get the party started. I'm Jane Garvey in North Yorkshire where Rishi Sunak is watching and waiting for his own count. I'm Patrick Maguire and I'll be in North London, where Keir Starman needs to find out if he's won his own seat first. I'm Rosie Wright in Clacton to see if Nigel Farage can make it eighth time lucky. I'm Kim Andrews in Glasgow, watching to see the fate of John Swinney's SNP. I'm Nick Ellaby in South London, where Ed Davey will find out if his stunts have turned into votes. I'm Fee Glover in Surrey, where Jeremy Hunt's future, not just as Chancellor, but as an MP, is at stake. I'm Carol Walker in Portsmouth North, where the Tory Cabinet Minister, Penny Mordaunt, is fighting for her political life. And I'm Tom Noonan on the Times Radio News Desk, bringing you updates throughout the night. And because you wouldn't expect anything less, we are joined all night by musicians from the magnificent Hackney Colliery Band. And Times Radio listener Heidi will capture the whole night in wool. Hi Matt, I'm going to knit two lines for every seat declared. So by tomorrow lunchtime, you should have a complete results scarf. Of course we've got knitting on the radio. And so, as the seconds count down to the exit poll, what are you doing right now? Let us know. 0333 003 2353 on the WhatsApps. Are you already on the edge of your sofa? Are you tucked up in bed? Are you in the car? Are you walking the dog? Where are you in the world? Where is your front row seat as history is being made? After all the talking and tours, after the manifestos and messages, in the end, it all comes down to you, 45 million people putting a cross in a box and making history. This is the election night without the boring bits.
on DAB Digital Radio, on the Times Radio app, and on your smart speaker. Times Radio, the election station. It's 10 o'clock. I'm Matt Chorley, and this is Times Radio on Thursday, the 4th, July the 4th, 2024. That's it. The election is over. The votes have been cast. The polling stations have closed. And the exit poll is in. And Labour is on course for a landslide. According to the exit poll, Labour will win 410 seats. But right now, as we approach 10 o'clock, Britain decides... The campaigning is over. The general election has just seconds to run. Throughout the day across the UK, millions of people have been voting. Now we're just moments away from the exit poll, which forecasts who they want to enter number 10. Welcome to Britain Decides. A very good evening. This is Andrew Marr and Sheila Fogarty with John Sopel and Lewis Goodall from the News Agents. We have had six weeks of stumbles, chaos and extraordinary polls. You've heard their pitches for power tonight. It's the voters' verdict. We'll bring you the biggest voices, the best analysis and the sharpest opinion. We're with the party leaders and in all of the key seats. On air and on Global Player, your non-stop election coverage is about to begin. If the polls are right, this could be the most dramatic election night you will ever hear. I'm Tom Swarbrick in Richmond, Yorkshire. When Rishi Sunak leaves this count in just a few hours, will he keep his job? Here in Hoban and St Pancras, I'm LBC's Aggie Chambray, following Labour leader Keir Starmer. Has he convinced voters to give him the keys to number 10? I'm Ben Kentish, following Lib Dem leader Ed Davey. He's enjoyed himself on the campaign, but is he about to become a serious political player? At the eighth time of asking, will Nigel for Farage finally make it over the line and into the House of Commons. I'm LBC's Henry Riley in Clacton on the trail of the reform leader. The political map of the UK is about to be redrawn. In the next few hours, we'll bring you the winners, the losers, and the best insight in what it means for the country's future. We've got some of Britain's best informed political analysts crunching through all the numbers, and we want your views. What went right, what went wrong. Over the next few hours, you'll hear it all here first. And unless every pollster in the country is wrong, the result will be anything but boring. OK, we're just seconds away in a moment as Big Ben strikes 10 o'clock, we'll bring you the results of the 2024 general election exit poll. to Andrew Marr and Sheila Fogarty on LBC. And tonight, for this historic election, we are teaming up in a global exclusive with our colleagues John Sopel and Lewis Goodall from the News Agents. Welcome to Britain Decides, live from Westminster, on air and televised in full on Global Player. And we will have the exit poll imminently. And Andrew, the expectation of the exit poll has been that the figures are going to come in in just a second. The ex expectation has been Labour on 400 seats plus. I think we can see it now here. The exit poll shows Labour on 410 seats, the Conservatives on just 131. Live from the News Building in London, it's Never Mind the Ballots with The Sun's Harry Cole. Good evening, I'm Harry Cole, the political editor of The Sun, and this is Never Mind the Ballots election night special, and what a seismic election night it is. That is it. After six weeks of campaigning, scandals, gaffes, illicit flutters, the polls are now closed, and the exit poll is in. 
It is the worst result for the Conservatives since 1906, some are saying. They had projected to win a mere 131 seats. Labour is on course for their biggest win in history, with 410 seats and a whopping majority of 170. And a story, what a story, the breakthrough of reform, who are expected to win 13 seats. I'm joined tonight by, in the studio by a top panel. We have Piers Morgan of Piers Morgan Uncensored <laughs> fame. Good evening, Piers. What do you reckon? Uh, it's an earthquake. I mean, this is a political and social earthquake. Good evening. It is five to ten. Polls across Wales and the rest of the UK have almost closed and we will soon know who will form the next government at Westminster and who will be the Prime Minister. Welcome to Election 24 from BBC Wales. Hello and welcome to BBC Wales's Election HQ and it is buzzing with activity here tonight as for the next eight hours or so we will be bringing you the results of the 2024 general election from Wales and across the UK. In a few minutes we'll have the results of the exit poll which will give us an indication of who will get into number 10. Will Keir Starmer return Labour to power after 14 years or will Rishi Sunak defy expectations and remain as Prime Minister? In studio with me for the night will be our political editor, Gareth Lewis, our money editor, Felicity Evans, and Professor Laura McAllister from the Wales Governance Centre. And we'll be speaking to an array of politicians here in the studio and live from the counts. And as all those results come in, our expert, Daniel Davis, will be here to analyse what's happening and help tell the story of this election. We will be analysing the data here in our graphic studio. As the results come in, we'll give you the information you need to help make sense of this election. Also part of our team bringing you reaction as the night develops is my colleague, Teleri Glynn-Jones. Yes, as the night unfolds, I have a range of politicians, pundits and academics joining me here on the sofa to talk political strategy, voting patterns and, of course, reacting to all the events as they happen. Wales will be central to how this election is won and lost and we have reporters in every seat across the nation, including Thomas David, who's in Llandidno. Bangor Aber Konui is one of the new seats created after boundary changes. It's notionally held by the Conservatives. Tonight, Labour really must win seats like this if they're to return to power. I'm Jenny Rees in Bills Wells, where two of the most keenly watched seats in Wales will be declared. In Montgomeryshire and Glyndwr, the campaign was overshadowed by the betting scandal involving the Conservative Craig Williams. And in Bracken, Radnor and Cwmtaw, it's one of the biggest new constituencies and now a three-way fight to win that seat. And I'm Owen Clark in Chepstow for the Monmouthshire count. Now the Conservative Welsh Secretary, David T.C. Davis, has held this seat for almost 20 years. The question is, will it still be his by tomorrow morning? We'll also be live at Westminster. And here in Downing Street, it all leads back to that famous black door. I'm Shelley Phelps in Westminster, bringing you reaction to the results. Who will make it to number 10? So, not long to go now before that traditional moment of high drama at the start of an election night that we've got used to uh, in recent years. And it really sets the tone uh, for the rest of the night, for the, for the rest of the eight hours, certainly at this programme. And, of course, will tell us so much because uh, the backdrop of this 
election campaign has been uh, a huge lead by Labour in the polls that has not shifted. Uh, so, Gareth, um, it's, it really is a moment here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You're answering one of, the, one of my questions, one of the questions that we're all asking. Are those polls accurate, Nick? Um, if they are, which big names have gone? Because some predictions that you know, double-digit cabinet ministers might go on for Wales. Is Wales following the UK pattern or bucking the trend? OK, um, uh, we'll leave it there. Hold those thoughts uh, for a minute because uh, we are about to get those crucial figures just to find out whether that lead in the polls for Labour is, in fact, reality according to the exit poll. Here we go. And the exit poll is showing a Labour landslide. It is 5 to 10 on Thursday, the 4th of July. We are moments away from the polls closing. Millions of you, the length and breadth of the land, have voted. We'll hear your verdict on the future, your future, the future of your family, your community, your country. Welcome to election night on the BBC. A very warm welcome to the BBC's election studio right here in the heart of BBC Scotland's headquarters at Pacific Quay in Glasgow. There's just nothing like an election night, is there? The drama, the moments, the history being made right in front of us. And we'll be here with you all through the night at every single count in Scotland. Wherever a vote's being counted, we will be there. And of course, we'll be at all the locations that matter right across the UK as well. Standing by in our results centre, our teams are ready to check and verify all the votes to bring our audiences on television, on radio and online the most comprehensive service we have ever delivered. At exactly 10 o'clock, the exit poll, the first indication of whether Sir Keir Starmer will become the first Labour Prime Minister in more than a decade. Will the gamble to call a snap election pay off for Rishi Sunak? Winning a majority of seats in Scotland is John Swinney's big mission. We'll find out if he's managed that. Ed Davey has had fun in the campaign, but will he be laughing tonight? And what of Nigel Farage? What's in store for him? With all the key players in politics and beyond to react to all of that is Kirsty Wark. Kirsty. Thanks, Martin. Well, with so much at stake, we've assembled all the big political players to give us their immediate reaction as tonight's story unfolds. And what a story we're going to have. I'll be hearing from the winners, the losers and everyone else in between. And cutting through the noise and what the politicians aren't saying, with me are the country's leading commentators and former advisors who were in the room when key decisions were made. And to make sense of all the numbers with his state-of-the-art graphics, David Wallace Lockhart. David. Who will walk through the famous door at 10 Downing Street tomorrow? It will either be Rishi Sunak or Sir Keir Starmer. Throughout the night, I'll be tracking the race to get to the magic number for a parliamentary majority, 326 seats. And of course, we'll have a focus on what's happening here in Scotland. This map has been dominated for almost a decade by SNP Yellow, but it starts clear tonight as their opponents hope to make gains. Laura Miller will bring you the news as the story develops. Thanks, David. We'll keep you right up to date with the news from across Scotland, as well as the big stories throughout the UK. As the results flow in, as the picture emerges of what choices you have made in this election, we are here to give you regular updates on what it means. And we might even manage to have a little fun along the way too. From the boats and helicopters delivering those crucial ballot boxes to those moments of drama that we all love on election night. We'll have it covered right here. 
Well, we're fast approaching the first of many big moments of the night. 10 o'clock means the close of the polls across the UK. Those who are in a queue to vote can still mark their ballot paper, still be heard in this election, but the polling stations will close. And once they do, the legal restrictions on what broadcasters across the UK can talk about are lifted and we can all start to discuss the real issues of the night and what they might mean for us all. The clock striking 10 also means we can reveal the details of the exit poll. The polling company Ipsos Mori has been speaking to voters up and down the country on behalf of Sky, ITN and the BBC, all the main broadcasters, to build up a picture of how they think the election has gone. They've spoken to 20,000 people at 133 polling stations up and down the country to build up a picture, an approximation of how they believe people have actually voted. And we will have that for you in just a few seconds time. Well, that famous bong means it is 10 o'clock. The polls have now closed. And I can tell you, the exit poll suggests Labour have won the general election. Not just that, Labour have won this election with a landslide victory. That moment Sir Keir Starmer has been waiting for appears to be here. If this exit poll is correct, he'll be walking up the to the famous black door of Downing Street to become the new Prime Minister tomorrow. The polls are about to close, the counting is set to begin and in the next few hours we'll find out who the winners and losers are in the 2024 general election. It's been a short, sharp campaign since Rishi Sunak called the election. We'll be the first to bring you who's won what across all of our 18 constituencies. And welcome to our coverage of the general election results here in Northern Ireland. Relax, get comfortable, this could be a long and nerve-jangling night. But sometime before breakfast tomorrow morning, we should know exactly who will be representing us in the new House of Commons and which UK party will be forming the next government. The campaign of the past six weeks provoked many questions and tonight we can start to bring you some answers. In just a few minutes at 10 o'clock, we'll bring you that all-important exit poll. A first look at how the next Commons Chamber might well look. Yes, here at the Titanic Exhibition Centre in Belfast, we have six counts taking place, among them some of the most interesting in Northern Ireland. We have two party leaders going head to head in East Belfast and a rare three horse race in North Down. We'll bring you all the stories and much more throughout the night. At the Meadowbank Arena in Maharafeld, we are covering a huge swathe of Northern Ireland. The unionist parties are slugging it out in South Antrim. It's a nationalist battle in foil. And the iconic Fermanagh South Tyrone seat is once again one to watch. I'm in Craig Avon, where we may only have four counts taking place, but amongst them is one of the most intriguing. Can the DUP hang on to Ligon Valley despite losing the sitting MP and party leader just weeks before this election was called? We'll bring you all the twists and turns. One by one, the green benches are about to fill up. It's all about the numbers, and we'll be adding them up and breaking them down. So. Who's going to be your next MP? We'll look at the votes in all 18 of the constituencies in Northern Ireland, and at the same time, keep a very close eye on events across the water, including in Scotland, where 57 seats are up for grabs. And of course, there's the big picture. 
the battle to become Prime Minister. The race is on. We'll follow it every step of the way. We have every angle covered. You don't need to move. You can keep your seat and we'll let you know how many MPs keep theirs. And I'll be joined by some of our sharpest political analysts to assess those figures as they come in. Find out what they mean and maybe even work out the results before anyone else. We've already got the early turnout figures and can make certain judgments based on them. David McCann is here. David, what do you think? Um, well, turnout last time was 62%. It does seem a bit depressed in some areas. So the figure I'm looking at is 57.6%, which was the turnout in 2010, which was the lowest in the history of Northern Ireland at Westminster level. A very interesting night ahead. Key constituencies and marginal seats and everything in between. And that's just a flavour of what we'll have on offer. Our political editor, Enda McLafferty, won't be leaving my side until every seat here is settled. We'll be hearing through the night from representatives of our main parties and we'll be in London too talking to Conservative and Labour figures as the wider picture there begins to emerge. But now it's time for that exit poll. As ever, this is a joint effort between the BBC, ITN and Sky News. It doesn't take Northern Ireland into account because of our size and particular electoral makeup. But in recent elections, it has proved to be a very accurate reflection of the overall UK picture. So here at 10 o'clock is what our exit poll suggests the people's verdict is likely to be. This is the moment of truth. And there you have it, at the stroke of 10 o'clock, our poll predicts a Labour landslide, Labour with 410 seats.